Hello Linux gamers and welcome to The Great Spin Experiment, where I take a look at various Linux spins covering different desktop environments and Windows managers. Now I have done two episodes in the series already and I've already learned that I kind of got it wrong. I went into this thinking it was all about desktop environments, but it's not. A window manager and a desktop environment can be two separate things. <laughs> Who knew? Well, you guys did in the comments. So thanks guys. Jan says that's one of the differences between window managers and desktop environments. A window manager is literally just the part that manages how the application windows behave on the desktop. Jan goes on to say the desktop environment is the whole shebang containing creature comforts like document viewers, calculators, file managers, bundle default browser, and whatever else. Jan also says that it's not a hard rule, but when we talk about window managers, it is usually what we understand by that. Now I did call the series The Great Spin Experiment and although I am looking at different spins, I'm going to try and focus more on desktop as suggested in the comments by Electrino. You could do desktop environment series and then window manager series because lumping them in together is, and I don't want to say wrong, misguided and I totally agree with you and thanks so much for the feedback dude. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, so next up we have LXQT, oh we'll start up there, we have Wayland desktop and open box huh i'm gonna stick with wayland enter my password and let's get logged in that comes up on all of them oh there's no battery okay power manager you are running your power manager for the first time you can figure it here oops disappeared okay as per the other episodes we are going to start with theme and tweak can we change the wallpaper uh desktop preferences da -da -da. oh background oh wait what Desktop preferences, uh, wallpaper image file, huh? Ah, oh, ah, uh, what, what? Default dark. Okay, so there is some effort involved to change a desktop image. Can I just go to images? They're all JXL files. What the hell is a JXL file? Never heard of those before. <laughs> uh, so I could download an image. If I go on to the internet, have we got a browser, internet, uh, Falcon? Okay, and we'll go to Google. There we go. Reject the cookies. Ah, my eyes. Uh, okay, so what should we do? Uh, space. Yeah, that'll do. Save, apply. And then we want it to stretch, don't we? So stretch to fill the entire screen, apply. I mean, it's still crap, but I'd rather have a blank desktop screen, I think, than that. Doesn't look like we can change theme. So we've got preferences, appearance, I suppose. Oh, we can do. Oh, icons theme, I'll execute. Oh, here we go. That's more like it. So you can make it look like Ubuntu. K oh, we can make it look like KDE Plasma, but I'd prefer dark. So, use oh, okay. Oh, that's easier. Silver. Oh, that's quite nice. Oh, that'll do. That'll do nicely. There you go. That's excellent. Now, can you do anything with the panels down here? Add a new panel. Configure panel. <gasps> Alignment left. Center. <gasps> we can change the length. Oh, yes. Now we're cooking. Oh, that's a bit too small. That's what she said. Let's change it to 50, uh, 75. Let's try 75. Oh, look at that. And then we can do height. Oh, yeah. Icon size. We can make it a little bit smaller or bigger. Now we're cooking. We can get it to auto hide. You've got styling, font color, background image, widgets, desktop switcher. Can I add that? Close that. All right. Okay. So I'll go click on that one. Add. Oh, maybe I need to do desk top switcher and then add widget. And then how do I get back out of it let's go back to configure panel close there we go application icons there so we can what, drag that into there oh this is quite nice this is quite good okay next we're going to be looking at app discovery we're going to look at the menu at the installed apps uh, and your favorites by right clicking them from categories okay so we click on all applications we've got appearance day and time discs falcon that's a browser Qt text editor, Fedora Media Writer, File Association Firewall. You know, all sorts of good stuff in there already built in. Got File Archiver, basic set of tools there, which are going to be quite useful. Huh, okay. You've got a screensaver there. I think these categories are quite useful as well. So we've got LXI image. What's that? File. Oh, I guess that's. So if I go file, open, downloads, and then do that one, and then go. Can I edit it or is it just to view it i think it's just a viewer isn't it file yeah i think it's just a viewer can't do anything with it okay so that's pretty cool nice so what about searching 
So if I type in it, well, it's just there. Look. So you have to click down here by the looks of it, unless there's a shortcut. All right, next we have tools of the trade. So we need to do an update. So how would I do that? So I'll click here, go to system tools and Q terminal. Okay. And then we would go sudo DNF update. Is there, is there a graphical way of doing it? Let's have a look. Uh, if I just type in here, update. Okay, DNF Dragora updater. So it's telling me that there's updates available. So how would I actually update them? Oh, hang on. If I hover over that, that says updater. So if I go right click on there, update. Oh, my eyes though. Let's go. So if we go all to update. So what, what, is this everything that needs to be updated? Select all, apply. 3.1 gig, damn. So I need to enter my password. Okay, so it's doing it. A few moments later. Okay, so that looks like it's done. There's no more entries. Everything's updated. Let's get back to it, shall we? Um, we can just double check that, can't we? If we do that, if we do that, and then go, it should say nothing to do. Oh, hang on. What's that doing? Oh, it's different repo. No, we don't want to do that. Okay, exit. So we now need to browse files. So if we go into here, that's interesting that, that that's, that's quite cool. If I put it there, does it line up? <laughs> that That is neat. That it really is neat. Okay, so browse files. Oh, uh, yeah, functional, perfect. Does what you need it to do. If I press F3 or F4, what do we get? Now that's interesting. <laughs> and then, yeah, we just go through here, back to there, click on documents, go back. How do we get to root? Uh, 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 there we go, that's cool. Very cool, does what you need it to do. Should I read the manual? We're not reading the manual. Excellent, okay. So what about monitoring the system? How can we do that? Is there anything we can do there? So I go to here and type in mon. So yeah, there's no built in monitor. Okay, that's fine. So if we go log out, yes. And then we'll log back in to that one, which is the Alex QT desktop. What do we get? Okay, so everything looks the same. It's now given us the four screen. Okay, so now what if we do monitor? Monitor. Oh, <laughs> that's not system monitor. Oh, that makes sense now. That makes sense. System, system tools. Okay, so there is nothing. There's nothing to monitor the system. So you get to choose the one that you think is right for you, which is not a bad approach. Okay, next up we have navigation. So we wanna open up multiple apps. So how do we do that? So we can go, okay, we're gonna open up Falcon and we're gonna open up, uh, let's just do all, uh, open up uh, disks. And then we're gonna open up feather pads, date and time. There we go. So are there any shortcuts to move these around? So control and arrow to change the window, which is nice. But you can't, it doesn't look like you can position them anywhere. So what happens if I drag it over to the side? So yeah, there's no built-in window manager. I just moved that to four though. How did I do that? <laughs> can I drag that onto here? No, nope. so what do I do? So it's now on three, let go. I click in again, to get the four, one. Sorry, two, four. I can't do numbers today. So that's quite nice. As you can see down the bottom, it's switching between the desktops. And if I go and grab that, maybe I want that one on here. And then I can click down there. I'm sure there's shortcuts to change. Okay, so there's no tiling manager built in. So you would have to install the tiling manager. Again, that's great because you might want to install whatever works for you. We've been using this for about, what, 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes now. And yeah, the responsiveness, again, I'm on a, a VM, but even so, I mean, uh, very cool. Everything's working great. Would I use this 100%? I would 100% use this desktop environment. I'm very impressed with it. How lightweight it is. It's really, really functional. You can build it how you want to. I could go into terminal. So actually we've got here, right click. So if I go terminal and just go right click on here and add to favorites and then do that. It's see, yeah, I like that. And then I can go uh, sudo DNF uh, install um, Kate uh, password and then go yes. Uh, Kate, well, it's sh where? Ah, that's a good point. Where would it put that? Has it stuck it in here? So I typed Kate. It has. So then I can go right click on there, add to favorites, do that, go into here, change the theme to dark breeze, get rid of it so it doesn't do that. When you log, open it up, go back to there, add to, so you can add it to desktop. How do I add it to here? Can I just drag that onto here? No. So maybe I would need to add it to desktop and then add it to here. And can I delete it from here? Okay, so that hasn't worked. Huh, not sure I like that. I'm probably doing it wrong. Right click 
add to desktop. Now, I bet you if I put that in here, oh, actually what I could do, so that's going to work now. So this icon here connects it to the desktop shortcut, not to the application. Can I change that? No. Okay. So then, but what I could do, isn't there one to hide the desktop? Hide desktop. Wait, there we go. Job done. Do you know what? This is a serious candidate for a future build. I like it. I like it a lot. So there you go, Linux gamers. That was Alex QT. And it's a desktop environment that I actually really like. It's very functional. It has some customization, but there does appear to be some limitation as well, especially within Wayland. Although there may be ways to work around that. As I say, this is the first time I've used these desktop environments. So I don't know enough about it to, to make any decision around it. Now, would I use it myself? Absolutely. I think it's great. Don't forget to pop a comment down below or leave an emoji for the sake of engagement. Thank you so much for watching. You guys take care and I'll catch you in the next one.